One of the things that I was really aware of right from the start was that there are not a lot of resources to uh, explain what psychogenic non-epileptic seizures are outside of the physical appearance of them and the cause, the immediate cause of them, as well as, you know, the baggage that goes with everything. Um, whatever's out there, it's not commonly spoke of. I've talked to many doctors who aren't familiar with it. They've heard it in med school. Med school was many, many years before that. And I understand it's seizures automatically go to neurologists. Um, that kind of confused me because it is anxiety, stress related. It's, it's a psychological disorder. So why are neurologists treating people with PNES? There might be a reason um, that I'm not aware of. I am aware of the fact that there are no medications that can help you, no anti-seizure medications that can help you with PNES. I know that there are a lot of people who are on them, unfortunately, um, are dependent on them because once you go off an anti-seizure medication, it makes you more susceptible to having a seizure. Um, doesn't mean that if you speak with your doctor that that could, you know, that could happen. So really, I want to do this quick because I know that people have limited time. So uh, information that I'm hoping will be helpful. There are early indicators. I could tell by a feeling in the back of my head. It just uh, kind of like a tingling. Sometimes it was like an electrical feeling and also um, a pressure on my chest. I could tell by one or both of those things being present um, that I was about to have a seizure. I have a little <laughs> post-traumatic stress with that because every now and again I'll get that feeling behind my head and any feeling in my chest, my, my head, even the no even though I know that I'm not going to because I'm doing what I need to do, it's still, you know, it's still a little shocking. Um, at the start of those, it's almost like a computer. When you turn off a computer, it has a slow response because it's shutting everything down step by step and then it's out. That's exactly how it is. I slowly went into that. Nothing inside was moving slowly. It's just that my body was slowly shutting off, shutting down, and that didn't. Trapped little cell. Um, sometimes later on, I would have maybe two minutes between when I would get the indicator and when the seizure would actually happen. In the very beginning, I had no warning whatsoever. Although people who were watching could see it, um, they could see it in my hands. I would start to, actually they could tell that when I started with a long gaze, just far away gaze that, you know, get ready. Um, also they'd wash my hands and my hands would start to curl up. I knew that was happening, but at that point I didn't feel like it was an early indicator. It was, it was on. Um, <clears throat> so what helped? I'm going to jump around because I don't know what order <laughs> is helpful. It, as far as in the beginning, indicators, helpful things, Xanax, Clonopin, those were helpful right as soon as I woke up, before I hit the floor, I would have a Xanax. Uh, later I was switched to Clonopin and that would usually ward off that morning seizure because again I was having seizures because my heart rate was increasing naturally so but my body wasn't able to translate whether or not it was a seizure um, it, whether it should have a seizure because I'm under stress I didn't know the difference between just heart rate elevating for not <laughs> because I'm waking up um, once I was in the swing of it it, Xanax didn't help. Nothing helped. So it was already, like I said, it was already on. It was, um, there was no going back from there. 
there was a lot of hypersensitivity especially to sound sound could especially if i was vulnerable for whatever reason um, it could intensify the seizure tremendously um, pain tremendous pain when touched specifically when the body is moved um, when afterwards when we are just <laughs> laying there looking like we're sleeping. A lot of pain if you're in the wrong position uh, or if somebody touches you. And if you're in that position where you've already had the seizure, you are basically waiting it out. If outside factors like loud noises are presented into your environment, it can, for me, it started a whole new series um, I thought that this was significant when um, when I was able to start regaining my control it was facially it was my eyes I could start moving my eyes I could start to speak it was only a whisper that I could get out but it was enough to communicate to the people around me that I was ready to start moving and I needed people's help to speed up that process because once somebody helped me move my arms, move my fingers, move my toes, my feet, I had control again. It was a very strange response to some, you know, just, it was like it got a jump start. If I was in, if I was doing it on my own, I had to wait <laughs> while all that just naturally came back to me because it could take another 15 minutes. If I didn't have that, but I, I learned early on that somebody helping me move my limbs enabled me to move my own limbs more quickly. Um, things that helped, I don't know if, how much this is helpful in the medical profession, I did feel just my mind went to people who are in life support, who have brain activity. Um, you know, I, I just, I could really, uh, I could really relate to them, I think. Um, what helped me was calming music, was people not talking around me, um, not music with words, not chaos, and what seems like normal, everyday, run-of-the-mill conversations, whatever, it was causing me to, uh, I don't know, it was like my brain was really sensitive. My ears were really sensitive. So processing anything on my brain was just, it, it hurt my brain. <laughs> so Enyo seemed to be the only thing that, because I don't have, you know, there aren't really a lot of recognizable words when you're just listening to it, that helped me, it soothed me. Um, things that would start a seizure, in the beginning, just waking up. Um, physical activity. So if I <laughs> if I had plans to go somewhere, I knew that it could be out for maybe an hour, and then I was tied to head back. Um, if I did not sleep well the night before, I was in for a very fun day. I did not make plans for the entire day. Not that I made plans during that time period anyway. Um, but I knew that if I woke up tired because I didn't sleep well, it was, uh, I was going to be very susceptible. So anything that caused my heart rate to elevate, any kind of physical activity, walking, um, obviously stress causes your heart rate to, to increase, which is what triggers the seizures. Um, I, there must be some sort of vulnerable state that you're already in where loud sounds can trigger and start a seizure. And uh, also same thing with chaos, you know, chaos going around you. It might not be anything out of the norm that's going on, but whatever it is, is too much to process. Um, I'm, I'm constantly going through my notes now and constantly going over in my head what I feel might be significant, what might be of help. 
it is important to understand, I think it's so important to understand that the seizures are what happens. But from my point of view, what, what really happens is what happens after the seizure because you're paralyzed, completely paralyzed. Everything except for your mind is paralyzed. So I think that's very significant. And I don't know how many people are aware of that. How many people stop thinking about what happens. They have a seizure, that's it. That isn't it. <laughs> that isn't it. There's a whole process, but the process is only happening externally, not internally. So um, again, if you have any questions, if there's any help that I can be, I can't see my, sen my sentences are all jumbled right now. Um, <laughs> I want to help. I want to do whatever I can to help. This is something that people don't understand, they don't know about, and I, it's complex. And it's just, unless you've had it, you can't communicate to others what it is. And you don't know who you will say the right thing to, which will click. Everything will just click. So if you have these seizures, if you know somebody with the, that's having these seizures, don't keep it inside. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I know it is a psychological disorder. I have a psychological disorder. I have a couple, okay? <laughs> That's, I'm not ashamed of that either. It is important to share because without information, we will not have awareness. So please, I implore, please, 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 do your due diligence. Advocate for yourself. Advocate for those who you love. Doctors, advocate for your patients. We need to bring awareness to it because truly, the, it truly, truly is a terrifying experience to be trapped in your head and not have anybody knowing what's going on. It really, I, I can't really say more about that. Okay, um, again, if there's any help that I can be, please, please, message me, email me, whatever it is. You'll know how to do it on YouTube. Alright, thank you for watching.